In this series, I want to release videos showcasing some of Minecraft's most exciting and game-improving mods. I don't want to restrict this series to Forge, Fabric, or any version, but I will show each mod's availability when I showcase them. Each video will cover 20 mods, and I hope to have eventually covered hundreds of mods as this series progresses. I'll also show whether a mod is Forge or Fabric in its timestamp, and you can find the links to download all these mods in the description below. Firstly, we have Bygone Nether, which adds some new dungeons and structures into the Nether dimension. Currently, there are three included, which are the Catacomb Citadel and Piglin Manor. The mod also consists of new creatures inhabiting these structures, such as Wither Skeleton Knights, Warped Endermen, Wraiths, and Piglin Hunters. When it comes to loot, there aren't really any new items besides a music disc, so expect to find standard dungeon loot as the mod just makes exploring the Nether more interesting. Though it is possible to create gilded netherite armor inside a smithing table. One of the most significant improvements to villages and pillager outposts comes with the Towns and Towers mod. There are 17 new village variants and 22 pillager outposts, but a few more are available thanks to compatibility with other mods. These structures have been transformed to fit in with their surroundings better, while also being inspired by actual buildings and architectural styles. Though some villages are more minor, which makes sense, as in the snowy slopes, you might find a building that looks like a ski resort, or on the beaches, you might find a lighthouse structure. Or some villages have themes, like in the flower forest, where they use distinct Japanese-styled architecture. When it comes to pillager outposts, they have also received similar improvements. Now they'll take the appearance of different forts, towers, castles, and more with them standing out in their biomes. The structures are much larger, so the interiors are often worth exploring. So I think this mod is definitely worth using if you want a Vanilla Plus styled expansion to these structures. Illumination is a client-side mod adding particle effects to many Minecraft areas like fireflies, which you might see at night. Or in the oceans, prismarine crystals will spawn around sea lanterns. Changes are also made in the nether, with will-o'-wisps flying throughout the soul sand valleys. And in the end, chorus petals will fall from chorus flowers, with a number of petals depending on the age of the flower. Some halloween theme effects are added too, found throughout the month of October, but they can be configured to show in-game permanently, and these include Eyes in the Dark, Pumpkin Spirits, and Poltergeists. Looter is perfect for when you're playing with friends. Containers you come across, such as chests, barrels, shulkers, and minecarts, each have a unique inventory. That means you no longer have to rush to search chests or be disappointed if someone else finds a structure first. Multiple players can search the same container and expect to find loot inside, and the colors of a chest will change to indicate if you've searched it before. Ecologics updates some of Minecraft's biomes mainly by introducing new mods, blocks, and items. Expect to find changes to the beaches, deserts, snowy plains, and lush caves biomes. One of the more noticeable additions is the camel, which can be tamed and ridden by two players at once while also having storage space. At the same time, beaches contain coconut trees, coconut crabs, and sand castles, which can hide turtle eggs to protect them. Some other mobs are penguins, which hunt for fish and shed feathers, or squirrels in the plains, which can be fed walnuts, causing them to pick up nearby saplings and plant them. You can also find thin ice here, which cracks over time, causing you to fall into the icy water below. So generally, expect this mod to bring some immersive changes to some already existing biomes. Add Astra is a mod that will allow you to assemble a rocket, fly into space, and explore distant planets and moons. With it being a science and technology mod, there are lots to do like setting up generators and oxygen or creating lots of materials. As you explore the universe, you'll discover mysterious structures and fascinating creatures, with the goal being to build space bases and explore on rovers. You can visit Mars, Mercury, the Moon, and Venus, while also seeing Glacia within the Proxima Centauri system and you might even find some intelligent life forms of the Lunarian Villagers. The mod is quite similar to Galacticraft, which was popular with older versions of Minecraft. Chipped is all about adding new blocks, with over 9,000 additions in total, giving so much potential for new builds. Many of your favorite blocks like wool, planks, cobblestone, quartz, and so much more have new variants. In comparison, more niche blocks have also received changes, such as amethyst, coal, ice, ancient debris, leaves, and even melons. One example is lapis lazuli blocks, which have over 60 different variants, so you should be able to imagine just how many blocks are included with the mod. And many of them will connect together, forming entirely new designs like pillars. 
You won't find any of these blocks naturally spawning either, as they are all made through crafting. You don't have to deal with thousands of new recipes as they are made inside of the provided workstations instead. Just place the block in the appropriate workstation and choose a design. One of my personal favorite biome mods and also one of the most popular is of the biomes you'll go. It adds over 80 biomes into Minecraft, which fall under realistic, magical, and mythical themes, and you will be able to find these introduced to the overworld, nether, and end. The mod also introduces lots of new blocks, which are mostly woods, and these can be turned into doors, boats, fences, and more. There's a few new stone types too, like desite, red rock, and soapstone. In the overworld, you can find biomes like the lush stacks, red rock valley, orchard, autumnal valley, and the black forest. In the nether, there's over 10 biomes, including the Ember Bog, Gloatstone Gardens, Withering Woods, Magma Waste, and Wailing Garth. Finally, there's around another 10 biomes in the end, such as the Bulbous Gardens, Nightshade Forest, Viscal Isles, Ethereal Islands, and Ivis Fields. With the Conjurer installed, you'll now come across a large theater structure inside the Dark Forest biome. It's filled with illagers, but depending on the spawn, you might also obtain a Totem of Undying from an armor stand. Inside the actual theater, you'll find an audience of illagers watching the Illusioner, who will attack as you enter the room. The Illusioner has multiple attacks as they can cast teleport spells, throw stacks of cards, summon hostile bunnies, and launch bouncy balls, which all deal damage. Though in general, the fight is relatively easy with standard netherite equipment. For drops, you can receive weapons like bouncy balls and playing cards, which can be used as ranged weapons, and the Conjurer's Hat, which can be dyed and reduces all magic damage received by 30%. Ender Master changes the process of reaching the end. From now on, they'll require 12 unique eyes to activate the end portal. There are 16 to be obtained, and different mobs like Evokers, Elder Guardians, and the Wither can drop them. Or some can be crafted or found in structures such as igloos, desert pyramids, and pillager outposts. Once 12 have been found, the portal can be opened, so overall, the mod really forces you to explore content that you otherwise might have skipped. This mod used to come with a large castle structure, which is where you find the end frame, and generally it's a fantastic location to explore and filled with some hostile mobs. And even though the castle was removed from the core mod, it's still possible to install it as an add-on, and you'll find lots of treasure here. If you aren't a fan of building or simply like stumbling across new structures, then you might like the Simply Houses mod. It adds nicely decorated buildings to your world, ready to loot or move into. There are around 10 structures to find, which include the Plains Mansion, Tega Inn, Forest Chapel, Tega Forge, and Forest Stone Mason. They're pretty big and ready to move into. Depending on the structure, you'll find a nicely decorated interior within them with a few chests containing loot and other valuable items like crafting tables, beds, armor stands, and more. To start with the backpack mod, you should create a backpack from six rabbit hide, two string, and one iron ingot. Backpacks this mod provides have their own inventory slot so that they can be rendered on the player's back. And by pressing the B key, you can quickly access the backpack and its nine slot storage. It's not a lot, but with a configured mod installed, you can easily change the storage it provides. One of the coolest features is that challenges are included, which can be completed to unlock some new backpack designs, such as the trash can, sheep plushie, firework rocket, bamboo basket, and quite a few others. Some enchantments are also included, as well as backpack shelves. After installing this mod, you'll find a new variant of villager spawning, which is the guard. These will spawn with a sword or crossbow with different armor pieces. The main purpose of guards is to defend your village from hostile creatures as well as raids and you can create your own guards by right-clicking nitwits with a sword or crossbow. If your reputation with a village is high enough or you have the hero of the village effect, then a guard's inventory can be opened so that you can swap out their weapons and armor items. Some buttons will allow you to tell a guard to patrol an area, and with hero of the village active, they can even follow you. For an expansion to farming, I'd recommend installing Farmer's Delight. Wild crops and new meats like bacon, ham, and cod slices will be found. You can combine all these different ingredients in the cooking pot or crafting table, creating a massive variety of new meals and foods such as pasta, stews, and soups. There are even feasts, which are large placeable meals where players can take individual servings similar to a cake. Generally, Farmer's Delight brings one of the most impressive improvements to farming, with there being much more like baskets, nets, ropes, and cutting boards. It also has many add-ons, and I've covered this mod in more detail in its own showcase, 
which can be found on my channel. Regarding add-ons for Farmer's Delight, you should install Nether's Delight, which starts by adding Nether-themed versions of the main blocks. And so new raw ingredients can be obtained like Strider Slices and Hodland Sirloins. Then you can create meals such as Warped Moldy Meat, Grilled Strider, and Strider Moss Stew. Or instead, you can make the Stuffed Hodlin, which is a feast, and then players can take individual servings using a knife and some bowls. But there are a few other additions, like Mounted Hoblin Heads. With Creeper Overhaul, you'll find 15 new types of creepers alongside the vanilla variant. These are themed around different biomes, and that's where you'll find them spawning. Some variants include the Bamboo, Ocean, Beach, Mushroom, Swamp, and Badlands Creeper. They aren't just simple color changes either. They have all new models and animations, with some even having some interesting behaviors such as the Snowy Creeper, which is neutral to players instead of being hostile. Whereas the Bamboo Creeper tends to be scared of pandas and will run away. One of the newest additions is the Ocean Creeper, which is like a puffer fish and will poison you as it attacks. Another mod to improve structures is Repurpose Structures. This mod mainly aims to introduce many new variants for the existing vanilla structures. Using the Pillager Outpost as an example, instead of finding the same style throughout your world, the mod introduces new variants that help them blend in with around 14 different biomes such as Snowy, Jungle, Desert, and Badlands. These changes are brought to structures like pyramids, mansions, mineshafts, shipwrecks, villages, and witch huts. Some of these structures are moved between dimensions, so you can find overworld structures spawning in the end, or even bastions and cities and nether fortresses generating within the overworld. The mod adds close to 100 additional structures, and it feels like a vanilla plus mod as no new blocks or items are included, it's just a nice quality of life improvement. With Aquaculture 2, you'll find a massive expansion to Minecraft's fishing system, starting with the introduction of some new tiers of fishing rods. With them, you can catch around 30 new types of fish, which spawn in different water types and includes tuna, jellyfish, carp, and catfish. Another new addition is the tackle box. Inside, you can place your fishing rod and upgrade it by adding bait, a bobber, a fishing line, and hooks, which give effects like catching two fish at once or playing a sound when a fish is approaching. Eventually, you can obtain Neptunium ingots, which lets you create new equipment that gives bonuses when used underwater, such as increased swimming speed and the ability to breathe underwater. For an update to the UI, try out Inventory Hub Plus. It adds a lot of helpful information to the screen, showing what you have equipped, the number of arrows in your inventory, how many free slots you have, and the durability of your items. And it can show all the other items you have stored in your inventory. And the mod is highly configurable so you can hide elements, move them around the screen, give them a visible background, and more. Another UI change comes with the Advancement Plax mod. When unlocking an advancement, a new window appears on the screen with some sounds, giving more of an RPG-like feeling in the sense that you've actually achieved something. You can further change the Advancement Plax using resource packs, which there are quite a few of, and you should be able to find them on Curse Forge. That covers my first episode of the best mods ever released for Minecraft. I'll be doing another one of these very soon, so if you haven't already, consider subscribing. And make sure to check out my channel for many more videos like this one.